just working on edging. So many people asked for an edging video that I thought, let's talk about edging. Um, by the way, thank you guys for your video suggestions. I really appreciate them. I look at them. I always try to figure out a way to do them if I feel like there's something I can add to the conversation. So we are talking about edging. Um, I have three kinds of edging in my yard. I have a brick edge, which goes around what I call the circle garden. I've got metal edging anywhere where there's gravel meeting either a garden bed or grass. And then the rest of my edges are all just edges that I cut in. Um, you know, I don't think there's a perfect kind of edging. It's a uh, balance between cost and effectiveness. And, um, you know, there are really cheap options out there. There are very decorative options. Um, there are permanent options. This is what works for me. Um, I would say, you know, you could look into some of those other things and kind of weigh it all. But I would say the one thing about creating a nice edge just cut into your grass is that one, it's free um, as long as you're willing to do the work. Two, you can clean it up at any time. And three, if you ever want to change your bed, you're not committed to something that's already there. Um, so I think those are all really good reasons to do it this way. Now, um, there are many ways to create this edge. Now, what I was just showing here was just using a flat spade. Um, that works really well for me um, because I don't have one of, the, one of the really good tools for this, which is uh, like a mezzaluna uh, edger. Um, I'll put one up on the screen for you so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, I actually don't own one of those uh, because I have a better way to do it. Um, but before I use this, I used to just get down on my hands and knees and just cut it with a trowel. And by the way, you can do that. So I use this flat trowel for planting. I like this a lot. This works really well for edging too. Um, if you want to be down on your hands and knees, it's a lot of wrist action. Um, so these are all things you want to do. So the, the thing you're trying to accomplish when you create a grass edge is you want the edge um, on the outside to be perfectly up and down and you want that to meet in sort of a, a V. So you're not, you don't want like this, you want like this um, because that will help keep that, what you're trying to do is keep that grass from continuing to grow in. So, and then when you mulch it, don't fill up that trench. What you want to do is just follow the contour of the bed. So you're only going to mulch on the bed side. Don't fill up the little half V that you've created there. Let me show you an edge that I've already done. This edge right here, I have obviously not already done and you can tell how it's kind of shaggy. So earlier today I did this edge um, and doesn't it, isn't it so satisfying how it looks? So I have not mulched here, but um, you can see that I've gone down Oh, like probably three inches or so up to like my first knuckle. And um, you just sort of push the soil up into the bed and clean up that little edge. Now this is the unfinished edge right next to it. And you can see this is supposed to be kind of rounded, but you can see I've got a flat spot in the middle. So I'm going to try to correct that too. So you can do it all by hand, but why do it by hand when you can use a power tool? I'm kidding, but this is a really nice one to have around. So this is a Troy Build Edger that, um, full disclosure, I got from them several years ago when I did a post with them. So this video isn't sponsored, but I did come about it um, through a sponsorship deal. So, um, but I love this thing. I use it um, religiously. It might be my favorite power tool that we have uh, in the garage. So um, if you don't want to buy an edger, keep in mind that a lot of hardware stores rent power tools and you could probably rent one. So that's another option. So I'm going to show you how I use this um, because unfortunately this doesn't do the whole job. You still do have to do some handwork, but let me just show you how it fires up. So normally, you can see where it's cut. Normally you wouldn't come out that far, but because I'm trying to correct 
this edge. Um, that's what I wanted to do to try to get a little bit more curve to it. But normally you could just do, you know, just even here, you can see I barely cut into the bed. There's still a pretty nice little edge there. Okay, so here's the part where you have to get a little bit manual. Now you can do, you can use your spade again, but you still have to get in here at the beginning of the season. If you come back later, you probably won't have to do that, but you still have to come in and pry out that little bit of grass, especially if, like me, you're cutting away a little bit more of the bed than what was there. Now, some people complain when you use, when you edge like this, that every year your beds get a little bit bigger. I find when you use the um, gas edger, that's not the case unless you want them to, um, because it will cut a very nice fine line there without having to cut back so far. So it doesn't necessarily have to make your beds get bigger every year. So I don't know how it happens, but invariably the mulch always sort of finds its way in there. So I just sort of toss everything back up into the bed. It sort of looks like a mound sometimes. It's amazing how quickly that goes away too. I do shake off the soil just because, you know, soil's expensive. And why would you take soil out of your garden? Um, this, all this grass that you're pulling out, by the way, this makes amazing, um, amazing soil down the road. So you can throw this in your compost bin or you can make um, what they call a turf stack. It's essentially just throwing it in a big pile. And um, this will become amazing soil very quickly. I like doing this. Um, I like doing this right on the ground unless it's really miserable out in which case I'm probably not doing this job. But I like doing this on the ground because it's a good way to get, frankly, up close and personal. And like, I mean, here's grass that went way into the bed. So I'm gonna take that out too. So I like to be able to you know, kind of get a close look at anything, everything. And the other thing is, is that if you're doing this with the spade, you still have to bend over and pull up all this material. So. I don't know about you guys, but I've been gardening a lot this weekend and I'm sort of sick of bending over and so is my body. So sitting on the ground, hanging out in my garden is not so bad. It is so satisfying to do that. So this is one more tool that I wanted to show you. So this is how I'm gonna just finish this edge off right now, but this is what I use most of the rest of the year. Now I've talked about this in my tools video, but this is a Baco edge pruner, I think is what they call it. But what this does is it cuts that little bit of shaggy grass along the edge. So just touching up the edges with this during, throughout the summer usually takes care of anything. Um, and also it sort of is gonna finish this off. Okay, so doesn't that look like, I got some dirt on me, go figure. Uh, doesn't that look great? I told you guys uh, when I made my last video that edging to me makes your garden look better than anything else. Like if I had to pick one job, if I had somebody, you know, I had one afternoon to get my garden in shape, I think I would edge first. Um, I think that even if you have weeds in your beds, um, edging just makes them look, makes the whole thing look nicer. So I really only edge my beds once, maybe twice a year. Mostly I'm able to just keep up on the routine maintenance with that little Baco pruner. Um, so that pretty much does it. Sometimes if I'm feeling really ambitious, I will edge the beds in fall because if you edge your beds in fall, you almost only need to really touch them up on in spring. So that makes it go easy. So anyway, I hope you guys found that interesting. I hope that answered your questions about edging. If it didn't, give me, uh, leave me a comment and I will answer them there. Uh, thank you guys for watching this video. Do me a favor, give it uh, a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so you can keep following what's happening in this garden this summer because we are starting to get into it now and lots of stuff is happening this year. So I hope you'll follow me and I hope you guys have a great day in your garden. Bye.